Welcome back again, Beth, and we're, we're back looking at how we do StreamYard so we can learn when we're going live how to get out on multiple platforms. So welcome, Beth, and over to you. Thank you. So StreamYard, um, for anyone who wasn't at Steffi's session, StreamYard is a tool that you can use so that you can go live on more than just one platform. So for example, if you go to Facebook right now and you wanted to go live on Facebook, it's really easy to do. There's a big live button on your page and you can just click that button and go live from there. At LinkedIn, however, you have to use a third party streaming service to do so. So that's why I first stumbled upon StreamYard was so that I could go live on LinkedIn because that for me is the most successful platform for generating interest in my business. Um, but while I was on StreamYard, I realized I could do multiple platforms. And if I was putting all the effort into prep and plan a live video, why wouldn't I want it to go on all of the places that I was present rather than just the one? Um, so I'm just quickly going to prop screen share on then um here we go if you could give me a thumbs up once that loads on your end yeah perfect okay we have a problem with breaking up Bethan. Best thing about stream email is just weird. You email code and you need to see yeah. up. Hello, can you hear me okay? I hear you now, but you are breaking up intermittently. Oh no. I can hear you now. Sorry about that. There's there's a it's a bit mental here today. The the Wi-Fi has not been great. I've got no idea why nothing I can I can do but I'll I'll persevere and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm showing on the screen at the very least okay um the first thing I just want to show you is the real how to set up for StreamYard so if you are looking to do this the, the first question is usually how do I do multiple platforms destinations is the place to go you quite simply Click add a destination, whichever one you want. There's lots of different options here. Typically, you're only really going to be looking at this first selections. And once you click on that button, you can log in through your Facebook page, through your LinkedIn, YouTube, etc., as you normally would. And that will connect the two services. So then once you've logged in, you will be able to go live on that platform. To actually set up and go live on StreamYard, the way that it works is through what's called a studio. So what you firstly need to do is click create a new broadcast, or you do have the option to upload a pre-recorded video as a live if you choose, but I would push you to, if you're gonna go live and use streaming as a service, then stick to new broad broadcast so that people can interact with you. And then you select where you want it to go. So I've got my three options here that are synced up. I have Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So if I just select one of these, you then get the option to put in your title, your description, so that it will kind of appear through then on the social media channel. So if you're on um, all these different channels, you can customize it for each destination as well. So if I just write something in here to show you what I mean. Um, I can go into LinkedIn and make this say something that's LinkedIn specific. I could change the one for Facebook so that they all are just that little bit different and work for the individual platform that you're using. Okay, now don't be scared. I'm going to hit create broadcast. It's not going to send me live. I just want to show what you can see on the other side. Because this is the bit that um, is maybe the most technical element. Automatically, you'll have, let me pop these like that. Automatically, you'll have options to kind of play around with your settings on your mic, your uh, camera, and what you want your name to appear as. And then you will enter the studio. So what you will see when you enter the studio is this. This 
is the basis of how to go live. So a quick tour of this platform. First thing you have to do, you can see this pop up here. I'm not currently in the stream. So you can create a stream where you're doing things like screen share, where you're doing things where you've got multiple participants. They will all appear down the bottom of the screen here. And only once you click add to stream, will it become visible to the people on the other end. So if I start my camera so you can see, here we go, this demonstrated a little bit better. There's nobody there until I click add to stream and then I'm on screen ready like I would be if I was going live. If I want a different background or layout, if there's gonna be two of us, for example, I could swap that around. I can go, unfortunately, because I don't have multiple people, I can't show you what it would look like, but you can have lots of different options of how you want this to be break, broken down so that you can do whatever you need this live to do. Then on the other side of the screen, you have this chat box. This chat box is where all your comments and questions will appear, which is really nice. It means you can manage them all from one place. If you're doing multiple different locations, you don't have to worry about, oh, what if there's been a message on LinkedIn I've missed because I'm only able to look at the Facebook chat. All of them will come in here all at once. But it is kind of letting you know that some comments won't be sent. So I think it's LinkedIn for the for the most part that you can't send out the, the comments to. You can only see what other people have commented. And you've got some other little toggle options here as well. So banners, for example, if you wanted to pop some things up on screen. So I've got set up in here my Instagram handle and my website that I use quite frequently when I'm going live. So you can set up easy, quick links. You can do a quick breakdown or definition of the topic that you're talking about. If you want to give something that's more text orientated while you focus on maybe getting into the down and dirty detail. And they're really, really easy to add it. You can either just make a new one and type whatever you want it to say. Um, and you can have it be a scroll across or a straight one. So you can have one that looks a little bit like a news update if you want to. Um, and it's also really quick and easy to change the colors and branding to make sure that it matches your brand and your personality as well. So you can mess around with colors, the style and shape of how you have your banners set up. Um, you can have a logo displayed on the screen at all times if you choose to. And you can add things like overlays, which where, where it starts to get a little bit too complicated for me, if I'm honest. They're, they're usually used on um, really big, if you think of like live news events, they tend to have overlays on the top of their videos all the time. But that's not something that I've dived into for live for social when it's short term stuff just yet. And the last thing that you have is a private chat. So if you did want to run this uh, live with, say, team up with a few of the women from I Am Women and do a group live where you're talking about a subject matter that you're all experts in, you could have a little private chat where you say, hey, can I add something to the topic? So you don't have to out loud interrupt and, and that sort of thing. And only the people who are in the stream yard with you will see it. And all of this you can play around with and mess around with without doing anything until you hit go live. So only when you hit this button will it actually push through to the platforms that you've selected. It'll give you a nice three, two, one countdown on the screen and you will be immediately live. So you don't have to worry about having Facebook and LinkedIn open and checking when they come up. It will automatically do it for you. So uh, like we were talking with Steffi and Angela, if you're talking about going live, throw, don't worry about waiting and, oh, can you hear me? Just jump straight in when you see the three, two, one countdown finish. So that's the basics of the studio. I'm just gonna need the account. I will mention that this is not a 100% free platform. I do have the paid for. The only difference is the paid for, you can do the multiple streaming options inside of. And in the paid for, it will automatically record and save all your previous lives. 
wow, there's some beautiful screenshots of me there, aren't they? <laughs> Mouth wide open as I'm uh, chatting away. But this is really handy for, for being able to repurpose content. So for me, you can see I have did a bit of an over the shoulder. I recorded how I did something. Um, and that's a 35 minute video that I can then download and cut up into lots of different pieces and use on social media for more content rather than it just being a one and done scenario and um, this again is a like a tutorial video that there's no need for it to only be alive it could be pushed out again and again to, to generate interest whenever anyone asks about it so that's everything really about Streamyard. it is a really simple platform so it should be quite easy for you to get around so it, does anybody have any questions about things that maybe you particularly would like to do that you'd like to see how it would work? I'd like to know the context in which you use it as part of um, an educational tool. So I honestly use it the same way I would use any video platform, any video content. I think it's a tool in your in your kind of marketing strategy the topic of what's in your life is entirely up, up to you. So whether that be educational or otherwise. Um, as an educational tool, one of the big things that I've noticed is what if I am kind of educating, I find that being able to add the street screen share in is a big benefit because then you can do the likes of showing slides. You can do all the things that you would usually do in a presentation or a webinar, but have that available publicly. Um, I would just say typically with live, anything after sort of half an hour to 45 minutes starts to be that you're getting on a bit long. So um, if it's something longer, it's, should that be a workshop that people can sign up to for free rather than a live video on your social media? And the other thing I wanted to ask, how safe is the content? Because obviously you're putting a lot of effort into developing these. So how can you be assured that you're just not going to lose it all? Well, you're definitely not going to lose it all because they are posted on your social media channels as well. So as much as I pay for the convenience of having these video videos here and easy to download, I can quite literally click download or share. Um, I could also go into my Facebook and get them from there. It's just a little bit more convoluted of a process to get them to download in a nice format. But yeah, I've never had any issues I just unfortunately don't use this as much as I should be. So that's why there's not a huge amount of content in there. Okay. And when, you, when you're when you then downloading, yeah. uh, you it downloads directly within StreamYard and you don't have to put it through any other process then and it'll just, you can just repurpose it. Yeah, once it downloads, it'll be a movie file. I think an MP4 it downloads as or an MOV file, I'm not sure. Um, but it'll download as a kind of video format file in your download folder on your computer. Um, you can then pop that into some video editing software and chop it up if you want to. Or you've got the full thing in your back pocket if you wanted to upload it to something like YouTube to share people the link easy. I've heard you mention as well, Bethan, that you do a lot of recording as opposed to going live. So yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you choose to do that and how you would do it? Yeah, let me not share off for this. For me, I am um, firstly more comfortable on recorded video because I can, sometimes my brain moves a little bit faster than my mouth. and I'll go to say something and it'll get jumbled out on live. If I can pre-record it, then I know that I can kind of take that minute to reset, say it again and clean that up. Um, I also find that I'm able to make content go further with pre-recorded video personally. So I have a YouTube channel that I upload to twice a week that typically I get between 100 to 400 or so views per video. Whereas live video I have found on my platform gets anywhere from 10 to 15 views, even on social media platforms where I perform a lot better. So LinkedIn, my posts typically get about a thousand views, but my live videos are much, much lower. So for me, that if I'm going to the effort of planning and creating a video, I have found that uh, recorded works best for my audience. But I do think that's something that 
people should sort of test and see what works for their audience and what, what they react to because some markets are very very strong in the live video space so it'd be really nice to ask everyone now in which context were they thinking of using StreamYard because obviously the context is going to drive how you might use it so can we start with you Sarah because you're a gardener so how were you thinking of using StreamYard yeah well um I think it might be it's gonna have to be outdoors I can't use my computer so it'd have to be using my phone for starters so I don't know how I'd manage all that Bethan I don't know if StreamYard is functional from mobile if I'm honest I've only ever used it from computer mm. so I'm mm. not sure whether it's got an app or something like that it might be something to look into okay thanks yeah I'm, I'm just thinking hmm. it might be that I have to record something and um up front like you do and and rather than go live and things like that I don't know I'll, I'll look into that yeah Thanks, Bethan. And Louise, no now you're doing retreats. So how how were you thinking of using this as a tool? Um, so I think it would just be for advertising them, maybe being able to talk a little bit more about them because I feel like a you know like a post doesn't you don't really manage to talk about it. So it just gives you an opportunity to talk a little bit clearer about stuff, maybe just about stuff which is going on just gets people, gives people an opportunity to kind of have a bit more of a feel what's going on. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I, no, I get that. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. I, I was don't just, know. I just, yeah, sorry, carry okay, on. I think it's a... Go for it. No, sorry. I think I've got a lag, so it's, I'm not picking up. When you're starting and it's getting up, um, I wait to sell because if you can, yeah, well, I don't, I don't... Oh, it's not picking up, Bethan. So, um, perhaps we can come back to that, Bethan. We're going to take somebody else's question as well. So, going to Louise Adams because you run a training school. Uh, so how might you be thinking about using StreamYard in your in your trainings or would it be in your advertisings? Um, I was laughing at because I answered at exactly the same time as Louise. That's not at all confusing having two of us, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, I mean, I, I'm a technophobe and, and Bethan knows that. I mean, I don't even know how to use um LinkedIn and all these other platforms yet so I'm on a bit of a journey into figuring out how to use them all in the first place but I think when I do certainly for the training company I can really see the benefits of streaming to different places so things like and I don't do this and I should do when I'm with my learners and I'm traveling around the country I'll often sort of um, do little updates and say you know I don't know whatever it might be about their micro tea sessions and what I should be doing is putting that across all platforms but because of my inadequacies when it comes to social media in the first instance, I'm lucky to post it to one, let alone three. So this would be perfect for me because when I figure it all out, I would then obviously get a much wider reach um, and the same for the therapies as well. So I, I can definitely see the benefits. It'll be another one to put on my list of to do's to learn how to do it. But it from your presentation, Beth, and it looks really simple, actually. Which for yeah, me, I'm not skipping anything either. That is genuinely the the most complicated part of it is yeah. logging in through your account. Yeah, definitely. So going forward, when I've learned how to use all the platforms properly, um, I could definitely see that I'll be using this, and I'll definitely come back to you, Bethan. <laughs> Perhaps a nice way to start, Bethan. Would it be that it's almost like you just add one account to to Streamyard and then add a new account? If it depends on on what your priorities are for your marketing strategy, really. It's going back to that strategic decision uh, when you're asking things like that, I think is important because is it that you've got one platform that's a standout that you want to make sure is getting the most attention or are you trying to build brand awareness and you know you have multiple platforms that need to grow to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of 
comparing it using it within what your business goals and your focus for your your brand is and your marketing goals I don't think there's a yes or no question on that can I ask you whether um, LinkedIn would be a good place for me to be, <laughs> just out of interest, because I've never tried it. I'm a bit like Louise, I'm a total technophobe. For advertising retreats and my place, do you, would you think that? Remind me who your ideal customer is, Louise, because I think it always comes back to who is the other end that you're trying to reach. It's just people who want to go on a retreat. So do yoga, meditate, relax, chill out, sauna, plunge, pour hot tub, all that kind of thing. That's what I'm offering. So the weekend retreats and hopefully more now during the week, people can come and just run their own mini retreats. Um, that kind of thing. Okay. I would say firstly, then go go a little bit further into that. Who is it you're trying to target? Um, I have an ideal customer template kind of document where it's a bit of an exercise to go through and think about kind of what is the typical person? Is it typically a woman? Probably in your case, what are their typical age range? And um, what are their interests outside of your service? Pain points and goals, challenges, the, the things to get to help you get to know them. And um, because that will give you the answer to your question. Because if you say, you, you do this exercise and you say, I want to reach women who are, got professional women from 35 plus who have extra income spare time really interested in health and well-being and kind of professional personal development as a whole and a senior level in some big businesses where they 100 percent are going to be on linkedin if you said you're more looking for kind of 25 year old yogi types who want to come away for a weekend to be super into yoga and just immerse themselves then I'm going to say Instagram and and maybe even TikTok are going to be better platforms for you so I think do a little bit of a drill down on who that ideal customer looks like I think at the moment it's just like actually there's so many different markets to reach and I do really want to get into like professional women Um, I think they need it more than anything you know so yeah there is a definite there is a definite opening there I think in LinkedIn possibly I do want to go down that route I've got somebody who runs a empowering women in business course and we want to run a retreat together so maybe you know LinkedIn would be the place to market it nice yeah definitely I think in that case and then the other thing is if you have multiple of these audiences there's no reason why you couldn't market with the with the kind of goals and focus being around the professional women on LinkedIn and then the Instagram page be a focus of 25 year olds if you've got the time to kind of tweak and target your message on each platform um but I will always be don't be afraid of picking an ideal more more people than you try to talk to will always find you like for example we just had a storage solution company sign up to work with us our ideal customer are online coaches online business owners we were still approached by this storage solution company um so people will always find you and people who are outside of your ideal but it always helps to attract people better if you stick to that eye on social okay so let's go to Lorna so Lorna you're in um, a very unusual kind of genre and I just imagine just like when you watch you know the any kind of artistry program there would be a great opportunity for you to show how the work develops from taking an image through to the completed piece. I love watching that. It's the same, you know, when somebody's cooking something, you always want to taste it at the end. But, you know, what was the recipe to that? Which would obviously mean recording, but probably suit your style and rain style a lot better. So I'd love to know, Lorna, how you were thinking of using it. Mm. Yeah, poss- possibly. I mean, obviously, <laughs> Obviously, there would have to be some sort of commercial aspect to that because I think if we <laughs> if we videoed how we process everything on our screen, whilst it would be very interesting, it would also be very um, how can I say very generous to uh, to our competitors. Um, I, I, in all honesty, I mean I'm very curious about um, 
live streaming. I'm, I can't quite at the moment, just being very honest, I can't quite compartmentalize it for us. I can see, I can see that commercial aspect for us if we were training photographers in what we do and maybe use it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open minded as to where this could go. Um, but you know, I'm I mean, I think for you guys, it might be that your first step is video content rather than lives. If you're concerned about kind of showing the process, a video video content that you pre-recorded, you can cut out bits if you think, oh God, I shouldn't have shown that. That gives too much away. Um, but I do think people will be a lot more interested than you think about that process and connecting with what it looks like to go from coming in to get your pictures taken to kind of having that beautiful end product. So yeah, aside I think, from I think training other people. Yeah, I, I see the behind the scenes. I see the making of, but again, that's on location then in so much as we are then in a studio, um, somebody arrives and we're chatting and we're discussing the shoot, taking the shoot and so forth. And we can um, cleverly edit that so that there is a feeling of generosity and in information, but not to, oh, and the light is set at this setting and angle, you know, such and such. Yeah. Um, absolutely and we do we are very aware that there's appetite for that so we have the awareness we we know we would like to do this it's just the execution of it i mean we have got a videographer book to come and work with us at the start of next year for this very reason to start shooting with us mm -hmm. or behind the scenes um yeah it's just it's it's more that it's more the sort of uh, satisfying the curiosity then of our clients rather than saying this is exactly how we do it mm, lovely and we haven't heard from Yvonne so yeah. I know Yvonne's yeah and we product that um she could use live streaming for so oh it's a lovely background Yvonne so uh Tell us how you think that you could be using live streaming or any challenges you feel you might have. I think it works really well for the products, especially with Christmas coming up. You can show people what Christmas gifts we can do. But um, thinking about my parenting and the um, goal mapping, it will be good to just sort of highlight what courses are coming up and what the content is. And I mean, my view is just slap it across all the platforms and see what the feedback is, because you don't sometimes know where your people are hanging out. And it's good not to I mean, prejudge where you think they are. I think testing it is, the, is like I mentioned earlier, I tested it and for me, pre-recorded it has lent into being the best option. Um, so I, I always vouch for whatever you do from a marketing standpoint should be tested. Um, one thing that I can think of that might be really interesting for you, Yvonne, is I don't know, I know you have TikTok. I don't know how much you look at it. There are these these things called TikTok shops, which are done on lives, which are really interesting kind of, it's almost like QVC style. Like they sat there, here's, here's our product that we've got available and they talk through all the features of it. And it's really, really gained some momentum. It's hugely popular at the minute. Um, and they come along with some great deals if people buy while they're still on the live sort of to incentivize that it might be something for you to look into even if not on tiktok but taking that kind of concept testing it on some like platforms the with that. The based that. options you've got yeah i'll have a look at that what's the age group of people on tiktok is it right the way across the board bethan or a particular age group yeah it's changed so drastically. It's it's really really flipped lately. Um, we've seen topics that I'm going to my head now. A topic that we expect. So it's really really spread. If only a third of the kind of teenage age that we think of TikTok, um it's hugely hugely grown the other thing is the oh god am i going to remember the statistic right <laughs> i think the highest 
Oh, we've got a bit of freeze. Increase user sign up age range is the age range of. What was that age range then? Because we missed it, it actually broke away. Oh. Perhaps you could I said the fastest up. growing age range is, I believe, 35 to. 35 to what? I was going to pop it in the chat. Um, to 45, I believe. Ah, oh, right. So, so if that's your age group, then TikTok might be something we'd like to have a look at. So are there any other questions you would like to ask Bethan? So it could be something to do with your particular business, your particular need or a particular technique. So can anyone jump on who's got a particular question for Bethan? Silence. The silence out there. <laughs> Is there anything we should have asked you, Bethan, that we haven't haven't asked you? Can you set us all a challenge so we can all go away and start working with it? I think the biggest thing that I would like to drill home is that if you don't plan your video, it probably won't happen. And um, we can all get busied up and have the best intentions to do things. So I do a process of kind of scripting my videos, not too intensely, but just bullet points of what I'm going to talk about, shot lists, if it's something that's pre-recorded, what different types of video is going to be included, it'll be delivered. Um, so I would push all of you to kind of plan at least one video, whether it's live or pre-recorded. I just think video is so important today. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Beth, and for all your input today. I'm going to be itching, especially to get, get, I think what's really interesting for anyone involved in training is to have those little pieces that go along the bottom there, to have these like news flashes or key points going across the screen. It's almost like as though it's playtime, isn't it? And it, it <laughs> looks so professional with you just having your name there as well. Uh, and you had, you know, the signpost to your website. I thought that was really, really professional. So thank you, Bethan. Really appreciate all your input. Before everyone signs off today, I'd love to know what your updates are. Uh, if there's anyone on screen you feel could help you or if there's anyone you haven't connected with. So I'd really like to know, yeah, what are you up to moving forward? So we're going to come to you, Sarah, because I know you might have to hop off soon. So Sarah uh... launched your business. So uh, obviously you're going to need some help of other people who perhaps are <laughs> part of the group. <laughs> Beth and clapping. Yeah, it's taking its time, hasn't it? I even did my own website, Beth, and you'd be so proud of me. I don't know what it's like. It's, it's still in work in progress. But as Cheryl said to me, just get it done sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I just like to meet up with people for a cuppa, actually, and a chat and find out, you know, I um more for just... um. But yes, um, I've got, I've done my um, social media pages. I've done my website. They're all still works in progress, as everybody knows. That's how we keep doing that, don't we, over and over. I've realised that I don't have to be perfect. <laughs> um, is there any help I need from people? Um, yes, there probably is. But I think mainly I just think I want just to grow my network of friends so that they know what I'm doing, really. So... I think, I think that's so wonderful because you came to I Am Woman not even with that as an idea. Yeah, I know. And you're always the lady in the green cardi, and now you're the lady with green fingers. You've actually mm -hmm. come, developed an idea and learning all these skills, and now you've launched a business. So congratulations to you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. It's well, it's it's exciting, it's great, it's it's lovely. Gives me my gives me my reason for being. Fantastic. So mm. it's, I know Bethan's back from Bali in uh, December. So again, you can meet up with Bethan because I don't. Think I'd love to see Bethan. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So um, Lorna's just up the road. We got to meet Lorna for a cuppa. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's avoiding me. <laughs> we live in the same village. <laughs> have a meet up and have a cuppa then. Oh, no, yeah. we are because just quickly, I I was talking to Kathy um last week. 
and Kathy really wants to meet up with us as well, Sarah. So we must sort out this coffee morning. <laughs> so over to you then, Laura. What are you up to moving forward? Is there anyone you need to meet? Is there any help you need? Um, right now, it's the busy, busy, busy time for us because it's half term. And, every, you know, we're getting orders ready for people thinking about Christmas and it's just shoot, shoot, shoot. So at the moment, I've got to be honest, my mind for the next couple of weeks is very much on that. But we do. We are drafting ideas um, for 2023 and we are going to be reaching. I'm going to say any more at the moment, but we are going to be reaching out to the I Am Woman community to be a part of our, our plans. So. For me, it's a little it's a bit of a teaser, isn't it? There's a little bit of, you know, watch this space. Fantastic. And Louise with the glasses on. <laughs> Don't now doesn't have the glasses on. So what are you up to? I know you're very busy in the business moving forward. What are you up to? And is there, are there any connections that need to be made? Me? Yes. <laughs> you can just call me Loopy Lou if you like, because I answer to that, if that's easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's honestly my nickname as well. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> oh, brilliant. So yeah, so at the moment, this is um, in my trading company, this is my busy time because um, everyone spends their end of year money between now and the end of March. So this is my busiest time. And I, and I sort of, um, at the moment, I'm looking to to hire new trainers to support me going forward because I've realized that I can't do it all. I do do it all at the moment, but I don't have time out. Um, and I want more time and space to do my therapies, which is my sort of heart led work as well. Um, so at the moment, I know I've sent some stuff to Bethan last night um, that she's gonna have a look for me. And it's just getting my website and visibility for the therapies because a lot of people still don't know what I do. Um, probably including most of you guys here. So that's what I'm working on is letting people know what I'd actually do. Um, not just in the, the live um, presentations that we have with you, Cheryl, but in this space as well. But I'm I'm always the, the kind of quiet one in that respect. I'm still sort of quiet. And I think a lot of it is because I don't have the website set up. So I'm reluctant to send people to me because I don't have that space set up at the moment. So for me, I think, again, um, very similar, just making connections, um, getting to know you all, meet you for coffee. I keep saying to Lorna that I'm going to meet her, and I will, so I'm going to message you later. Uh, I need to come back to Lou and organise a, 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 maybe some day retreats. So I'm going to come back to Lou soon as well. So, so yeah, I don't want anything as such at the moment. I'm just busy be in the background getting stuff done so that when I'm visible, I'll have a lot more to say, I think. Fantastic. Thank you. Would you like to give some feedback on that, Bethan? And at the same time, tell us when you're coming back home to Wales. Coming back. Oh, she's frozen. We've just realised we dropped a boo-boo. So we, we went to Singapore over the weekend. Oh, sorry, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Right. We went to Singapore this weekend as a visa run to go and extend our visa for the last... 30 days now I thought it was a one month visa not 30 days and I've realized that it's exactly 30 days so we've got two days left in this country where we've got to pay to extend our visa for because we've got our dates muddled and it's too late to change our flight um but we're officially getting on our flight home on the 30th of November so we'll be back probably in action a few days later after the jet lag wears off um at the beginning of uh, of December but everyone can contact you in between yeah because obviously you're offering online support and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. I mean same way as they always have every like we've had clients from Dubai and like Europe just standardly so um we all of our support is online so yeah don't be a stranger if you are interested in some help don't just hold on until I get back I'm still around lovely and Louise retreats so tell us Louise what are you up to moving forward who do you need to connect with um I don't know who I need to connect with but I just want to plug I have got an upcoming retreat at the end of November which is 250 quid 
So it's just there was a last minute cancellation. So Louise, if you're interested or anybody else, um, it's going to be super, super cool. There's going to be like Ruth doing a sound bath, going to do gut health workshops and lots of yoga, sauna, plunge pools. So I just thought I would just let people know. Um, but uh, moving forward, I'm really trying to get my retreat place filling up during the week because at the moment it's very much a weekend only thing. So I feel like I'm missing a trick and I'm not really quite sure. We've just started putting it. So part of the thing of going on uh, four in a bed was that we had to advertise all the rooms individually. So people can now book a room, just a room for a minimum two nights stay and they can come and they can kind of run their own little mini retreat or come and just you know, stay there, have hot tubs, saunas, plunge pools, arrange for massage, do a yoga class if they want. So it's kind of just like a mini break. Um, so that's kind of, I'm trying to get people who are working. So again, maybe I'm thinking LinkedIn might actually be a really good place to advertise this, where, you know, people can work from home a bit more now. So they might be really interested in doing that, you know, so that's kind of moving forward where I'm going. I'm still very much, um, in the mindset of trying to go away for April. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just trying to find the right people to help me manage it and be able to manage it myself, you know, kind of online-ish. So I take on all that responsibility but have people on the ground running it for when we go away. Fantastic. Well, perhaps we can have a catch up as well, Louise, because I'm sure we're due for another coaching catch up as well. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no that would be amazing you should I'd love you to come and see what we've done because last time you came I have to tell you I have gone white Way. <laughs> I, I was so determined that I wasn't going to but um I have and I do really like it um, yeah so yeah it'd be really good all we've got all new beds all new stuff going on so it'd be really because you said it needs a little bit of updating yeah so um i'd be really interested to see what you think lovely can't wait yeah yeah so we've come to that time where we've only got about 10 minutes left so i just want to tell you what we're doing next week we have the amazing sarah boltman talking about your data and it's amazing how much data you have around you that you're not using and you're not making money from. And she's a data scientist, but she's a data scientist that helps people make decisions about what they should be doing, what they should be building, what they should be, be creating and what they should be making money out of. So it's a really specialist topic. And we're so lucky to have Sarah. She joined I Am Woman, oh gosh, I would say about eight years ago. And within a very short time from startup, she scaled up and she's gone PLC. So she's a super successful businesswoman, as well as being a data scientist, helping other people make loads of money out of the information they have or they store or they're creating. So, yeah, a great coup for us in I'm Woman to have Sarah come and run a masterclass for us. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Same time, 11 o'clock for our I Am Woman hour. And have a great week ahead, everyone. And I look forward to catching up with you next week. So thank you again, Bethan. We give you a round of applause. Thank you. You were amazing. And we're looking forward to you Thanks. coming home. We're really looking forward to you coming home. So cheerio, everyone. And see you next Monday morning, 11 o'clock. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.